Yo, what is going on guys? It's the Beast Pokeballer here as always, and today we have the third Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle coming out to you guys. This is a Smogon UU tier battle, and uh, yeah, it's against Nova, someone who comes to my streams. This was an on-stream battle, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and hop straight into the teams. Um, I just want to say guys, I hope you like the layout. I know it shows the bottom screen and that's really pointless, but I'm also going to be using it for live battles where we'll have a bit more of a point. Um, so I hope that doesn't bother you too much, and I hope you guys like the layout overall. It took me a while to make. Um, I have a Twitch version too that I use on Twitch, so definitely check out my Twitch. Link in the description. But anyways, guys, on my team we are rocking the Gligar. This is an EVLA Gligar that has massive bolt. It has Toxic, uh, Knockoff. It's basically the normal set. I heard you can get Counter, so maybe I want to make one with Counter soon later. But yep, yeah, that is Capri Sun Jr. for you guys. Next up we have an Espeon. This is just a dual screens Espeon that's really I only made to counter Galvantula's. Um, I hate sticky webs, so this thing does, you know, the magic bounce. Um, so yeah, that's basically what that is. It also has substitute, so, you know, maybe if you get the chance you can get one up. Uh, next we have Honchkrow, which is just my physical sweeper. I basically have three physical sweepers on this team, and then, yeah. Um, but anyways, the point of this Honchkrow is to come in, get a Sucker Punch off when something's on low health, and basically become my late game sweeper, sweeper with Sucker Punch. Because uh, it does have that Moxie boost once it gets a kill, so that's really useful. Uh, I'm also rocking the Pursuit um, instead of the Superpower. Uh, Pursuit's really good to catch opponents off guard, but yeah, I really like using it. Then we also have Brave Bird and Roost. Next up, we have what I is believed to be the best Pokemon in the UU tier, and that's going to be Darmanitan. Darmanitan's really good if you give it a Choice Scarf. Um, so the moves it's rocking is... Uh, has U-Turn for the Switch Priority, has Flare Blitz for All Out, Stab, and Power, uh, Rock Slide for the Sheer Force Boost, and then Super Power just for damage and coverage. So it's really good. Uh, next up, we have my Mega, which is going to be Sceptile. Sceptile's really awesome Mega, my favorite Mega in UU. Well, Blastoise is my favorite, but my favorite to use is Sceptile. This is basically just, you know, Leaf Storm, Giga Drain, Dragon Pulse, and I gave it Substitute. Um, so it's, it basically acts like Protect. You can use it like Protect since Sceptile is really fast to get off the Mega Stats without getting damaged. Or you can use it to just like late game. Um, you get the free Substitute. And you can just Giga Drain away and get all your health back and it's hard for them to break the Substitute. Um, and then lastly we have Feraligator. This is just a Dragon Dance Feraligator holding the Lumberry. Um, I got this from someone named P.S. Sharf. I believe that's their name. If, I'm, if it's not then I'm sorry. Uh, please correct me in the comments. But their link to their Twitter will be in the description. They made this for me. It's 6 IV. It has Dragon Dance. Crunch or Super Power, I uh, maybe forget. It has Waterfall, and then it also is rocking the Ice Punch. So yeah, that's my team. Now, looking on the other team, the threats I see are Florges, um, Gudra, and Umbreon. I know that they're all very tanky, um, but the other Pokemon I don't really see like being that big of a threat. Um, I see Infernape, and I, I'm thinking that that's going to be the lead because it can often set up rocks. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into the battle. Let's see what happens, and uh, yeah. Oh, also, the Obama Snow is going to be the Mega. It's the only thing he had that can Mega Evolve. So here we go. He's going to send out his Infernape. And I'm just going to go ahead and lead out with my Gligar. Because I know it can eat any physical hit. And most special hits, too. So he's going to straight up withdraw it first turn because of how bulky I am. Because he can't really do anything. And he's going to switch in his Obama Snow. Um, this allows me to get a free lay of rocks after, it's, after it starts hailing. You guys will see. So, yep. Snow warning. Uh-huh. And I'm assuming it's going to be a special attacking one. I know you can run it both ways, but Blizzard 100% accuracy is too good to pass up. So anyways, I am going to have to switch out right after this. Yep, we're going to have to switch out. And we're going to go into Darmanitan, because I know both of Obama Snow's main stabs aren't going to be able to hit me too hard at all. So I switch into him. And uh, it is a Mega Obama Snow, like I said earlier. Looking nice and shiny. Um, so it's going to Mega Evolve, and I'm like, oh, he's probably going to hit me with a Blizzard, which I know will probably do good damage, but we're good. But he instead goes for the Leech Seed, which really doesn't bother me at all. Because I know he's in a really bad position, he wants to switch out here. So we're going to get buffeted by Hail, no big deal. And, uh, he's going to take some Leech Seed recovery or whatever. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and predict the switch right here, um, which I do perfectly. Um, I didn't predict it into the Gudra like you see, you see he goes into right now. Um, but I do predict the switch, so I go for the U-turn right here. Um, and I actually do really decent damage right here, as you'll see. A lot better than I was really expecting. Um, almost half. But I guess that's Darmantan. Speed gets lowered from Gooey, but it's good that I know it's Gooey. Um, so it's gonna go back to me, and I'm gonna go ahead and send out, uh, Geico, my Sceptile. Now, this will get rid of the Leech Seed, because I'm a Grass-type. Um, we get buffeted by the Hail, it doesn't really do much. Now, turn 4 is up now. And what I'm going to do is Mega Evolve. I'm actually going to go for the Substitute so I can get the Mega Stats. I feel like a Dragon Pulse won't kill at this range. 
Um, so I do get the mega stats just in case. Uh, of course, I'm going to outspeed, get off this free substitute. And uh, yeah, he's going to use the flamethrower, which unfortunately is going to break the substitute, as you guys will see in just a second. Yep, there you go. And then we're both going to get hit by the uh, the hail. Again, not really a big deal at the point at the time. Um, so I wasn't expecting a switch or anything, so I just go straight up for the Dragon Pulse. But unfortunately, he's going to switch into Florgis, um, and my Dragon Pulse isn't going to do shit. Um, and I'm like, oh god, it's Florgis. I really hate Florgis. Um, Dragon Pulse again isn't going to do anything to Loda. The Hail Stop, though, which is good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out to my Darmanitan. Fearing the Moonblast and Sceptile is a Dragon type when it's Mega Evolved, and Fire does resist Fairy. So I'm going to go ahead, switch into Darmanitan, and I'm actually going to eat the Moonblast fairly well. Uh, for Darmantan, that's not a tank, um, not at all, has terrible defenses, that's good. Um, so we go ahead, we go ahead and we go for the Flare Blitz, which is just going to straight up take out this Florgis. That is why Darmantan is nothing but the utmost of power. That's Florgis, one of the biggest threats on the team, gone so easily, just like that on turn 7. Um, but anyways, he's going to send an Infernape, and me fearing the Mach Punch is, um, oh, well, he's going to take stone damage, which is good. But fearing the Mach, pu mach Punch, I'm going to go ahead and switch into Gligar. Um, again, Gligar is very physically defensive and can eat up almost any hit. Um, and I know Infinite don't get Ice Punch as, as far as I think. Um, but there we go, we eat up the close combat. Uh, so I'm just like, might as well go for Toxic. Um, I don't feel like Knockoff is going to do anything. Toxic will help wear it down. But he's going to instead withdraw the Infernape and he's going to go right into his Steve the uh, Gudra. Which is a good Pokemon I have Toxic on. So we do get off the Toxic on the Gudra. Now, I'm in a bad position because I know he's probably going to go for Ice Beam. So I switch into uh, my Pokemon that has really good special defense. Um, no matter what attack he, he goes for, I know he can take it. So I switch into Booty, um, my Espeon. And I'm able to eat the Ice Beam that he throws out, as you guys will see in just a second. There we go. Um, so at this point, I'm like, oh, we can outspeed. We can take some more hits. We might as well go for the, uh, the screens. So I go for light screen this turn. Um, you know, expecting him to use a special attack, of course. But he actually is rocking the earthquake, which is a little bit weird, and it helps him in the long run in this case. Oh, well, actually, it probably would have. Eh, I don't know. Either thing would have been good, as you guys will see. Um, but the Gudre is going to go down to the toxic damage, and uh, he's going to send out Espeon's evil twin, Nappy Love Me, the Umbreon, which is very shiny, of course. So I'm going to go for the Reflect just to set it up, as you guys will see in a second. Yep. So we get dual screens up. There's no point of substituting, because it wouldn't really have done anything. But he goes for the Foul Play, and I'm like, okay, kill me, kill me. Because I have nothing to kill it. Other than this, I have, like, Psychic and Substitute, and I can't use any of those. So I, I was actually pretty disappointed that Espeon didn't go down, so I just go for whatever. It, it didn't matter what I went for. Um, he's just going to kill me with the Foul Play. And yeah. So now I'm going to go, oh, he's going to get some leftovers recovery, um, which sucks, but eh, he's at almost full health, not completely. We're going to go ahead and send in Capri Sun Jr., because I know I have the Toxic, which will whittle him down. But he's actually going to go for Protect this turn, which is, eh, whatever, not that big of a deal. Uh, but the next turn we're able to, uh, as you'll see in a second, we'll be able to get the Toxic off on it. Uh, it's going to take the leftovers, full health. Um, so now we get the Toxic off on it, and I actually got scared for a second. Because, uh, as you'll see, right here, Synchronize comes up, and I'm like, oh shit, my tank is going to get toxic. But now I remember I'm immunity, so it's all good. Um, he's going to go for the foul play, and it's not going to do shit. Gligar is just too tanky to deal with that shit. Um, anyways, I want to get rid of the leftover, so I go for the knockoff this turn. However, he does switch into the Infernape, which is, meh, it's okay. Um, would have been better to get the leftovers off, but whatever. So the Infinite's going to take stone damage and then take the knockoff. Um, I know, again, that this thing won't be able to do shit to me. Um, so I'm completely fine with it. It's going to go for the close combat, which is going to do minimal damage. And the only thing that that does for him really is lower his defenses. So there that goes. And then I just go for the Toxic to whittle him down. I can't really touch him. I don't carry Earthquake. Um, but, yeah. Um, so anyways, he's going to take the Toxic damage. After the Rocks and a couple turns of Toxic, I know that he will die. But he goes for the Flare Blitz, which, well, yeah, I don't know if that was a good idea. But, because he, he's going to take uh, the Recoil damage. Um, but I think I just Roost this turn, right? Yeah, I Roost. Which is, you know, pretty nice. 
So I'm going to get a lot of health back, and he's going to take some more toxic damage at the end of this turn. There he goes. And uh, my light screen wears off, doesn't really matter. And he's going to go for the Flare Blitz again. Um, I think I just go for the knockoff, I'm pretty sure, just wanting to kill it after the lower defenses. Uh, he's going to take recoil damage, and then yeah, we go for the knockoff. And uh, after the toxic, I'm pretty sure we'll kill him. And, uh, yep, it's going to take him down, which is a win. Infinite was kind of a threat to my team, not too much. Um, but now he's going to go Hanson and Dipper his Mega Obama Snow, and luckily, it's going to take a lot of rock damage, about a quarter, I think, quarter of his health, which is going to be really helpful. Um, Snow Warning goes back up, so he's going to have the 100% accurate, accurate Blizzard. Um, and at this point, um, I didn't know I was going to outspeed, but I went for Toxic anyways, which looked up being, which ended up being the best play. So we get the Toxic off, but I, I was ready to lose Gligar. Um, he couldn't do anything else, really. I, I didn't have any good switches, so, um, he's going to go down to the Blizzard, sadly. But Capri Sun Jr. really put in work this match, you know, Toxicking a lot of things, and just being an overall boss. Oh, sorry about that, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and send in my Darmantan. And, uh... I'm just going to go ahead and Flare Blitz, and this is going to be able to finally take out this uh, this Mega Obama Snow. Not finally, but it's going to take it out. Um, but unfortunately, as you guys will see in a second, I'm going to take enough recoil to where it kills me too. Which um, is bad, obviously. But it's good to get rid of the, um, the Obama Snow. So I was going to send out his, or I'm going to send out my Sceptile, and he's going to send out Crobat Man, the Crobat. Um, this is a bad position, but I didn't have any switches I wanted to go into at the time. Uh, he's gonna take rock damage though, so I'm thinking maybe a dragon pulse will kill. So I go straight for the dragon pulse, and unfortunately, it's not enough to kill. Um, so he's gonna go for the sludge bomb, and it's gonna unfortunately take me out. Um, but at this point, he's in sucker punch range, obviously, of my haunch crow. So I'm easily able to go into the haunch crow, especially after the hail. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm able to go back into Al Capone, and I'm, ba I'm basically able to just sucker punch lock up this game. Um, I sucker punch Crobat Man, and he's gonna go down, and then we actually get our Moxie boost. So we're looking really well right now. We still have a full health for Alligator in the back. And he's gonna go ahead and send out his last Pokemon, which is gonna be his Umbreon. Right now. Nappy, love me. <laughs> I like the nickname. So he's gonna take some rock damage, which is really good. And we're gonna go for the Brave Bird. And to my surprise, it is gonna be able to take him down, as you guys will see. Um, but yeah, guys, that was the battle. I hope you all enjoyed my post commentary. I hope I did okay. I know I said, um, as you guys will see, a lot because um, it's kind of hard to post commentate uh, and go with the pace of the battle from the VS Seeker. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it all. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed. And guys, peace the fuck out, guys. Beast Pokeballer out. And uh, see you guys next time.